Hello everyone, Republic Jim here. Back out at Barn Body World Headquarters for just kind of an easy cardio workout. Going to be spending some time on my stationary bike. And I wanted to talk a little bit about a uh, sort of a long-term project that I have that I've been putting some planning into and starting to get set up for. So first of all, just for context, this is my stationary bike with this sort of redneck setup sitting on a stand. But what we have here is a classic Schwinn Varsity that I think originally I got it back in the late 1970s and rode it all the time back then as I was going through school and up through when I graduated high school and a little while after that. And then it kind of sat around collecting dust. But um, there's a few distinctive things about this that I need to point out. And back when I was riding it all the time, and I was also a very frequent runner. I was in really good shape, had good muscle endurance and fair amount of leg strength. And so we swapped out the front sprockets. This, uh, well, it started out life as a 10 speed, which was a typical varsity, heavy, heavy bike. You know, had fenders and everything else, and but had kind of standard gearing. So we swapped out the, the front sprockets and went with larger ones. So currently the smaller sprocket in front is larger than the stock largest one was. So greatly increased the gear ratio there. And then in the back, eventually switched to... A, six sprocket packet there um, which are all smaller than the standard ones the the smallest sprocket there is extremely small and again you know the smaller the sprocket in the back the higher geared it is so the combination of the big in front and the small in back just greatly increased the gearing to where it made it much harder to go up hills, but it had a much higher top end speed. And back then I was all about just racing around, going as fast as I could. And, you know, of course, having the extra gear in the back there gave me a 12 speed instead of a 10. So that helped a little bit with the, the range of, of gear selections. But I used to ride this heavy old tank with the, the tall gearing up hills and all sorts of things and I was able to do it back at that point and in fact at one point I went on the bridge that goes across the from between Oregon and Washington and it's just like a long steady uphill from Portland going over to Vancouver it's not real steep, but it's just a gradual incline. And that, you know, going across that was tiring. And then when I turned around and came back, then I got pedaling hard and put it up in the top gear and pedaled as hard as I could. And I actually passed a couple of cars going across the interstate bridge there. So I don't, I have no idea what my top speed was at that point. I had one of the old fashioned dial type, uh, speedometers on this thing at the time and it just pegged the needle and actually bent the end of it so I have no idea what that top speed was but anyway this thing was was set up for just flat out high speed for somebody with strong legs so then once we moved up here eventually you know I got it out and started trying to ride it around here which there's nothing flat around Republic it's all hills and I rapidly found out that, you know, 40 years later, my legs just aren't quite what they were back when I was in high school. And, you know, and of course, all those years of not riding a bike, I was out of shape. So <clears throat> I ended up pushing this thing up quite a few hills before I gave up and 
retired it and tried using a different bike. So made it a good candidate for this. So anyway, my, my purpose right now is just to work at riding it on a fairly regular basis to improve my cardio and to gradually build up my capacity to pedal it, even with the taller gears. And I should point out right now that the rear derailleur is screwed up and I haven't had a chance to mess around with it and try and figure out how to adjust it. So it automatically just shifts to the smallest sprocket, which you know, is a high gear. So even though I have the one on the front on the smaller sprocket, um, it's just perpetually in a higher gear than, than like the tallest one on a normal bike just because it's always putting it on that tiny sprocket on the back. So it makes pedaling a little bit hard, so I've got to really work at trying to build up my capacity there and get it to where I can pedal faster and for a longer period of time. But my goal that I'm working towards is I want to experiment with setting this thing up for doing different human-powered stuff and just as a real basic starter, I have this little unit here, which has the classic friction roller thing on it to generate power. I used to have something similar for the headlight on this thing way back in the old days where you had wired headlights and a little generator to run it because we didn't have all the lithium batteries and LED lights and such. But this is similar to that. It's got the same little roller deal that you put over against the wheel. But this one has a little built-in battery there and it charges up that and it has a couple of USB ports. So just to start with, I still need to adjust this and get it tight because right now it's just on here and loose and flops around. I, I need to get it dialed in there and tighten it down good to where I can get it to ride with the proper pressure on the wheel and generate some power and I want to be able to at least get that to where I can charge up my phone when I'm pedaling and that'll that's just a basic starter thing um, right now I don't have a whole lot of time to work on it because I'm still trying to finish remodeling my kitchen and I have a bunch of firewood cutting and splitting I still need to do and with winter coming on so you know, not a project that's going to be happening immediately, but over time I'm hoping to kind of work on developing this. My plan is to uh, get a few layers of plywood, make a uh, flywheel on the back to replace the standard wheel. And I want to attach the gearing and figure out a way to rig up a pulley for a belt and, you know, have that somewhat heavy plywood flywheel on the back that'll take a little more energy to get going but then will help sustain like steady power output and then have a, like I say you know have it to where I can hook up a, a belt with a pulley system and and uh, eventually what I'd like to work towards is having this all mounted on a more uh, solid platform with the integrated system with the with the belt and pulleys and stuff to where I can have a a uh, work platform up here in front and be able to hook up things like a bench grinder which you know that would be a relatively easy one to do I can just pull a grinding wheel off of one side and attach a pulley run a belt and I can then use the the uh, grinding wheel on the other side and use that as a sharpener or that sort of thing um, you know that's one possibility I've seen diagrams for how to uh, hook up like a blender and things like you know anything that has rotation of course it'd be easier if that rotation is in the same plane as what the the wheel is turning but it's not too hard to to uh, transition it to a horizontal rotation too so um, but that's ultimately kind of the goal is to to uh, get it set up to where some of these just basic 
tasks that are done with electrical appliances, I can do them by pedaling instead. And, you know, there's a possibility I might still attempt to rig up some sort of alternator setup to charge up car batteries, although I hear that that's pretty inefficient and not really ideal. So probably better off just sticking to like small ones for charging USB accessories. But anyway, yeah, I'll hopefully in the not too distant future, I'll be able to revisit this and give some more details and progress update. But we'll see, it's going to depend on on how quickly winter sets in and some of my other tasks that I have to get done first. But in the meantime, I'm going to uh, get on the bike and get some time in on that and continue to work at trying to improve my cardio capacity there and my, my muscle endurance and, and hopefully get myself more efficient at producing power when I do get to the point where I can use any of those setups that I'd like to do. So, you know, I just, I think just for general preparedness, it would be a cool option to have. And, you know, especially with the way things are going and looks like everything could hit the fan here in not too distant future. So nice to have some backup options for producing power or, or doing just general tasks like sharpening and such. So, yeah, that's uh, just one of those projects that, that uh, I think has some merit and it'd be a great way to just continue to work on my overall conditioning. So I'm going to shut up and get busy exercising. Hope that's been interesting. This has been Republic Jim. I'll talk to you later.